Hey everybody, Mark here, working on the Hawk today. Um, I've got my main gear saddle um, taken apart with a new saddle plate made and rolled uh, to hopefully somewhat fit the boom tube. And uh, my super talented friend, uh, Jake Drummond, uh, tack welded it for me. He's gonna do the final welding for me. But for now, he just tacked it in two places so that I can check out the alignment and uh, see uh, what adjustments need to be made. So I uh, kind of struggled a little bit. I didn't have a rope. Um, you know, I'm out here in the pole barn hangar with limited tools. And so I uh, used my old rear strut tube and uh, actually drilled a quarter inch hole in, uh, in the one end here and dropped the bolt through the hole in the gear uh, where the axle uh, would attach. Um, and I'm measuring back to a fixed point. So in this case, I'm uh, measuring back to the, uh, the center rivet uh, on the boom tube for the tail. Now it doesn't look like it's in the center because the vertical tail is um, adjusted to the right side the starboard side of the aircraft uh, for the slipstream effect of the prop in the, uh, the direction that it is turning. So this is a, set, a good center line reference. Is it perfectly on the center line of the boom tube? Probably not, but it's close enough for what I'm looking for. Um, I did make this mark. Um, for some reason, can't find my Sharpie today, so I used a pencil, which is typically a no-no in working with aluminum, but this is a scrap tube, so I don't care. Um, made a pencil mark to align with the center point of this rivet, the mandrel hole. Um, you can see on the other side, when I measured the right gear, I had the mark there. So uh, obviously, I'm a little bit off, and um, I tell you, the, um, the bungee arrangement that I have going on right now to temporarily uh, put the saddle in, leaves a little something to be desired. So I think before I um, uh, break one of the tacks and try to uh, kind of uh, rotate it a little bit to make that adjustment, I'm going to clamp it with some better clamps first and we'll take another measurement. Okay, so we're back, and uh, as you can see, I've got the bungees out of there, and I've got the saddle clamped. Now, <laughs> I have 3 16 hole in the boom tube, and right now I just have pilot holes in the new saddle that I made. So I'm actually using rivet mandrels uh, just to index the holes in some fashion to make sure that we are uh, at all aligned, and uh, I've got rivet mandrels. <laughs> On both sides, interestingly enough, with just the four mandrels in there when I took the bungees off, the saddle didn't go anywhere. So that was really helpful, even though I don't have a Clico um, to be able to do the 3 16 holes and my holes in the steel plate are not up drilled to 3 16 yet anyway. I'm actually probably gonna drill them up to quarter inch because I'm expecting to not have perfect hole alignment, although I'm hoping to get very close within the tolerance of the up drill to quarter inch. Um, this also gets epoxy, if you're not familiar with the Hawk. Um, there are, I believe, three different types of epoxies that you can use um, on the saddle plate, um, between the saddle plate and the boom tube. I had already cleaned all the epo old epoxy off of there. So this gets epoxied and riveted. Um, also, there are uh, two additional bolts, one on each side uh, through the gear leg through the steel tube holding the gear leg as part of the saddle assembly and through the lower aft laundron with some nylon saddles in between. Now I can already see, um, and it's hard to demonstrate here because we've got some harsh sun coming from the other side of the hangar, but I'm closer on this side than I am on the other. And so one thing I'm already gonna have to do, I know before we final weld this, is actually rotate um, the saddle plate just a couple of degrees um, on the uh, the weld rest of the welded saddle assembly. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. But um, I do have it in um, uh, clamped in place, like I said I was going to do. Now this particular gear leg, the left side, 
This is the side where uh, the axle broke off, and um, that's really what folded the gear back. As far as I can tell, the axle was already bent from a hard landing that the previous owner made, and uh, the hard landing that I made in the corn uh, snapped the axle right off, and the end, um, the axle's not on here now, but the axle tube that turns down actually is what dug into the soil, and uh, that's what folded the whole assembly back and peeled the rivets out. Um, and of course that sucked these tubes downward. Uh, so those tubes all had to be replaced. Um, and uh, I'll actually be shooting a more general tour of the aircraft and what the repair job is here in a little while. Anyway, uh, where was I with that? The uh, left gear is a little bit of a tight fit. I can get it in there. I was able to get it out. Um, but it's fitting a little tight and I just don't want to force it in there right now until it's really time to get it in. So I've got a pretty good index mark here. Um, just a little bit of residual rust from the steel part. And I'm going to measure the distance here uh, so that I can make sure it's matched on the other side. Uh, so looking at it here, it's about one and a quarter inch. Uh, I'm actually going to get it in a little bit more. It's a little bit hard to do with one hand holding the camera with the other. And I gotta make sure that the bolt stays indexed. Now it's a little bad, bit bad lighting right now because of the sun. When we get to the other side of the airplane, you'll be able to see it better. So we're about one and a quarter inch here, and we're going to take and put the other gear leg in, which, uh, Slides in a lot nicer on this side. I'm not really concerned about it. Like I said, the other side will go home all the way, um, but there's no need to struggle with that right now uh, until I'm ready to actually bolt it in. Final, I'm gonna make sure that I am upright and I'm just gonna put it in. It'll hold itself pretty well just by the weight of the gear. Um, this is a pultrusion. Um, uh, length of fiberglass uh, for the gear. Uh, this is just sort of a run-of-the-mill raw stock item. It's a little hard to see. There's some sunlight. There you can see one and a quarter. So I'm good. I'm ready to take my measurement again and uh, we'll see how that turns out. So I'm going to take my old rear strut tube um, and I've got the bolt in it. For some reason this side uh, didn't have a quarter inch bolt, had an AN3 instead of an AN4. So I have a quarter inch hole in here for the other side and the, the AN3 bolt uh, to go on the hole in the axle. Um, you can see right there the nasty kink in that uh, strut that I had to cause me to have to replace the, replace the whole strut. That was a result of uh, just getting it loaded onto the trailer to get out of the cornfield. So uh, that's another lesson learned. Um, you know, don't be in too big of a rush to get your airplane out of the field. Um, so here I'm going to put this on and you can see my mark moved a little bit, um, but not much, but it did definitely move. So I'm going to grab my pencil. Yeah, I can't find my Sharpie right now, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to make a mark in line with that hole. Make sure I'm actually lined up here. I know I'm staring through the phone. Yeah, that's not much difference. Um, I think we'll definitely have to break that weld. And, uh on that one tack weld and rotate this a little bit. So I'm gonna take this out, take the AN3 out of there and stick it into the gear leg so I don't lose it. I'm gonna go over to the other side. Careful not to poke a hole in my Dacron with my old tube. Again, I, my apologies, I'm filming with one hand and um, trying to work this so that you can see, I'm going to take the A and 4 bolt out and put it in my, in my tube and then slide the bolt in the gear leg. 
so I can index the length to the other side. And I have to go over top here of the vertical stab. And there is my mark. It is a little bit better than, uh, than it was. The two marks are a little bit closer, but uh, I still have to rotate that gear on the saddle a little bit. Um, if we were, I don't know, half an inch closer, not even three eighths of an inch closer, um, I would call it good. It doesn't have to be really perfect, although I'd like it to be, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull that saddle off and uh, grind uh, probably the rear tack weld off and try to um, just adjust the relative angle of the, uh, the gear leg tubes to the curved saddle plate and uh, just try to get us into a little bit better alignment. Okay, we're back and I've uh, got the grinder out with the cutoff wheel. Here's a better look at the main gear saddle for the CGS Hawk. Um, this is the new uh, piece that we fabricated and rolled. Um, we took a paper rubbing of the tubes, of the holes, in the boom tube after cleaning off all of the epoxy. And that's where we got this hole pattern. And I'm pleased that it's uh, somewhat close. Um, it's not perfect because after rolling the plate, um, it did, uh, rolling it did shrink it a little bit. Um, so, you know, I think we'll have a lot of good rivets in there. I'll be using some longer rivets um, quarter inch grip and, um, and, uh, to get, to get more displaced rivet head inside the tube. And as I said, I'm going to go up from three sixteenths to quarter inch as well, hoping that I can, um, uh, not snowman, uh, too many of the holes, uh, too badly, uh, if at all. Um, I recognize it's probably not going to be perfect, but with the number of rivets and the epoxy and the bolts going through the laundrons, um, really, it should be just fine. Um, all of the load is going in that direction, um, and um, the rivets um, not, obviously keep the gear on, but um, they're also indexing its position, uh, and we've got a lot of fasteners there, so we should be good. Um, you can see here um, on the top side the heat marks from the tack welds uh, that my buddy Jake did and uh, there's the tacks themselves. And what I'm gonna do, I've decided, is I'm going to actually cut the front tack. You can see here I've marked this right hand and an arrow facing forward, left hand and an arrow facing forward. Um, I'm gonna actually break the front tack um, because there's more distance in the back than there is in the front on that side. Uh, this side is a lot more equidistant, um, so I think it'll work out better if I pivot around the, the rear tack and uh, just move this aft just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grind this tack. And again, I don't have a tripod, not real professional here yet for the YouTube experience, so I'm going to uh, take a break and uh, use my trusty grinder carefully uh, to cut through that tack and uh, then we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. We went ahead and very quickly ground this tack. Now I did over grind a little bit. I'm not by any means perfect. Um, I did make a little sin there and put a little line in there, but I think uh, for the purposes of welding, um, that little bit of a score and steel plate uh, will not be a problem. So now what I'm going to do, uh, making sure we are properly oriented, is I'm going to take my mallet here, just try to tap it slightly, see if I can get it to move at all. I'm really just looking for a couple degrees here and hopefully get it to pivot around that rear tack, um, twist that rear tack just a little bit. Now, interesting enough, um, after I broke the tack, before I got onto uh, camera here, I did hear a, a pop because this rolled plate is uh, under some tension here. Um, it 
you know, it didn't, doesn't roll quite perfectly um, in the rollers, and so um, it is being somewhat held down uh, by the tack welds and having broken one of them. Uh, it released a little tension. We'll see when we get it on the airplane um, if it really changed the shape at all in a bad way. I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, so uh, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. We are clamped on the Hawk and as my 17-year-old daughter would uh, uh, gladly point out if she were in the hangar right now, um, I'm on the struggle bus a little bit. <laughs> um, I did find my shark Sharpie. I made an index mark of where it was. Uh, when I went to whack the plate with the hammer in that direction, of course the plate wanted to pop out on that side because of that tension that we have. Um, and so now I have it clamped from the bottom and um, of course I can't move it because it wants to move the whole thing. So I'm gonna try uh, readjusting my clamps uh, to only clamp uh, on these points on the saddle itself. Um, and then maybe I can move this and get another clamp on it. Um, to squish it back in so that it meets the curvature here and get it moved over. You can see, um, you know, the misalignment. Uh, if you look at where that tube comes relative to the down tube gusset on that side uh, versus on this side, you can see, at least from this view, this rivet hole overlaps a little bit. Um, so I know it doesn't have to move much. I'm, um, kind of wondering if, uh, we don't want to just try retacking it, um, a Sharpie mark behind its current position or kind of arbitrarily and, um, bring it back to the airport, retacked up and take new measurements. But I'm going to try this first with the reclamping arrangement and we'll see where we end up. Okay, so no luck. Um, everything's just way too stiff, even with just one tack. Um, it's a strong tack. Uh, Jake told me it was, and I believe him. <laughs> so um, it just wants to move the whole thing. And um, so I think I'm going to do a little simple math. <laughs> no math is simple for Mark, I'll tell you that. Um, not, not exactly my strong suit, but uh, anyway, despite the industry I work in, but anyway, um, I think I can do some math off of my triangulated points on that old strut tube and also do some math between here and what I think the change needs to be here and get reasonably close, at least within spitting distance um, so that you'll never notice that one gear is, you know, maybe a quarter inch ahead of the other um, by the time you get to the wheels. You know, I am totally fine with that. Uh, there are a lot of airplanes with much more air than that. Uh, I just really don't want it to be visually noticeable. I think um, if we get that close, um, then we'll have no problem with the handling of the airplane. Uh, that is not really a concern for me at all with this geometry. I think if it were visually noticeable, then yeah, we might have a better chance of noticing it when we're flying and we're, when we're handling it on the ground. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So that's it tonight from the hangar in Amro. Um, hope you enjoyed watching, kind of a frustrating evening in a sense, but uh, in the other sense, uh, momentous in that um, we got another major part getting close here. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get this saddle wrapped up get her epoxied and riveted and uh, start getting the gear back together. Um, so we're getting there. Thanks for watching Hawking It with Mark. All right, so I also wanna show you here why I didn't just go and buy a new saddle. Um, the rivet pattern is nice, but it is not symmetrical. Um, it's probably hard to see here. But if you look at opposing rivets, for instance, uh, you'll see that they are not perfectly aligned. Really hard to see here, but 
Uh, I'll show you here in a second with the paper rubbing I did, uh, an example of that. So Hawk sells saddles and they are pre-drilled. And um, I didn't want to buy one, not just because they're 450 bucks, it would be money well spent if I knew it was gonna fit perfectly. But although this uh, uh, rivet pattern, uh, this is the rubbing I took off of the boom tube, is really nice. Uh, it was done by home builder um, and uh, done okay, done well, but there's not equal spacing. You could see especially here and here compared to here and here that this was laid out by the builder and probably at the time that he bought this kit in 2000 um, I dare guess that uh, the saddles didn't come pre-drilled and now they do. Now um, um, I was offered to be able to buy a saddle um, without holes and I declined that um, because I wanted to give repairing this one a try um, and I think we'll be okay. Um, if, uh, if we get much further into this and I'm just not feeling good about it, um, I guess I'll get one with the holes. I'll have to use this rubbing essentially to then transfer this whole pattern to the new saddle plate. I'll have to work with it while it's curved, which would be a little bit more of a challenge. Not too bad though, I should be able to get a spring-loaded punch in to each of the holes along the radius. And I'll drill my new holes. But uh, we'll see what happens with this welding project. Um, I think we can work it out and uh, get it repaired nicely and uh, we should be looking good as new uh, by the time we're done. Uh, it's a beautiful night here at the airport. There's a little grass strip here at Wilkie Field in Amro. And it's just killing me. Um, but that airplane is not currently flying. Uh, but we'll get there. Stay with me, um, I promise. I'll get you some flying videos in my hawk someday soon. All right, everybody, I'm back. Um, I'm home and uh, we had dinner and the kids are all put to bed. Um, so I'm working on the hawk again in terms of figuring out just how much they have to move that uh, uh, connection of the saddle uh, to that saddle plate uh, on the left side, um, basically pivoting about the center. So um, anyway, I uh, took some measurements, had to bring the parts home because did I have a tape measure at the hangar? Uh, of course not. So I brought the uh, the old strut tube home with the marks on it and um, and of course the saddle and the gear leg and I inserted the gear leg at the one and a quarter inch uh, dimension as, uh, as my reference point um, and I took measurements of each so um, basically um, the right hand side measured 89 and one eighth inches uh, to that center line reference point on the tail, the left hand side 89 and 7 seven eighths of an inch. Um, so our goal would be uh, 89 and a half, but that's to the end of the tube, not to the hole that the bolt went through. The hole is uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch in. So actually, um, these are our dimensions, uh, 88.5625 on the right, 89.3125 on the left. So the middle, uh, our goal would be 88.9375. Um, this is the distance to the axle bolt, from the axle bolt uh, to, the, uh, to the saddle, to, to where the, the saddle uh, meets the rest of the welded assembly, 29 and 1 8. So the saddle itself is five and three eighths inches wide. And when I say that, I mean, um, if I can draw and film at the same time, uh, 
when you look at that saddle plate, this distance right here is five and three eighths inches wide. Of course, um, our gear then goes like that, right? Basically, more or less. So that got me into, um, you know, as I established before, my not strong suit, which is math. And I started to lay out the basic triangle. And, um, you know, I've got A and um, to the saddle. And I decided that to the center line of the saddle would be A1. Okay, fine. I have those dimensions. Then B. Uh, of course, I forgot to subtract the uh, 9 sixteenths. But anyway, there's my B. Then, of course, I immediately thought, okay, well, all right, E squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So A squared there, 1,012.83, B squared, 8,000 and some. C squared uh, then would equal 10,789. The square root would be 103 inches. So I know as I had to clamp together what the distance is here between the center point of the saddle and my reference point, but that doesn't really do anything for me. <laughs> Obviously, I got to know what um, the change is at this point right here when I have it rotated uh, into position to shorten this up to the to the reference dimension that I want. So I'm sure that's going to involve some sines and cosines, and uh, you know uh, that's just not my thing. So the easier thing to do for me, at least which is just draw it in CAD. Now, um, this gives you some perspective of what we're talking about here. Um, you know, yeah, there's our reference dimension to the reference point in the tail from the axle retaining bolt. There's the center of the saddle. You can't even see the difference here in the adjustment that we have to make. If I uh, zoom in, Let's see if we can do that uh, with one hand, right? Uh, get the hand tool so I don't have to... Oh, let's see if we can find... Uh, there we go. Okay. So at the, uh, at the axle bolt, we're only talking about a, uh, a dis difference of 13, 30 seconds, essentially 3 eighths of an inch. <laughs> so... Uh, the difference in the saddle, the amount that we have to move that weld. If we scroll up here, oh, here it comes. The difference is only a 32nd of an inch. So just about what I predicted, um, really just about the width of that Sharpie marker mark is the amount that we have to rotate uh, the tacked assembly to get it right. So I think I'm going to have Jake go ahead and tack that back up for me, uh, basically with the uh, the two Sharpie marks basically offset from each other by one, uh, one line width or 30 seconds of an inch. And, uh, and I think uh, just to be on the safe side, I'll bring it back to the airport. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, the whole thing has to be clocked, um, probably also about a 30 seconds of an inch in order to get the spacing um, of the gear legs to the left and right laundrons correct. Um, which, let me illustrate that for you if you don't recall. Um, basically, we have, oh, I got fingers in the way. Uh, basically, we have, um, you know, our gear legs come out, right? And we have the laundry on tubes on each side. And in order to get the spacing equal here for our nylon saddle bushings, uh, we basically have to clock this um, just down a little bit here and I'm talking a little bit like a 32nd of an inch 
So I think we'll try retacking the assembly uh, with those very fine adjustments. We'll bring it back to the airport and, uh, and we'll see how it looks. And hopefully it's uh, good to go and we can do uh, the final welding on it. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, be sure to check out the uh, featured channels. Uh, there's some really cool, uh, good guys out there with Hawks. Um, I especially enjoy the videos from Flying Air Sick, Air Sick Adventures. Also, be sure to check out my brother, uh, who has nothing to do with CGS Hawks or aviation. But you see that link there for Project 6th Street. Check out his home improvement videos. He's pretty new to YouTube, just like me. And uh, he's my brother, uh, so I'm a little biased, but he's a great guy. So uh, you should check him out. All right, uh, we'll talk to you later.